She's going to give us some interesting results in cardio-oncology. So five minutes, please. Thank you for your invitation and for your interest in uh, our research. It is my honor to present you the experience of the City Hospital Timisoara in uh, the early detection of uh, chemotherapy-induced cardiotoxicity and its a prevention using an inexpensive drug, an antioxidant, beta-1 selective beta blocker, Nebivolol. As we know, breast cancer is a major public <coughs> health problem worldwide with a death rate of about 1 in 33. Anthracyclines are a class of pharmacological agents that are widely induced in the treatment of breast cancer, but one of their main limitations is their toxic effect on the heart inducing heart failure. So although they decrease cancer-related mortality, they may increase in time heart failure-related mortality. The goals of our study were to find a method that accurately and early detects cardiotoxicity and to see if a cardioprotective drug, namely Nebivolol, may prevent heart failure in these patients. The study group included 60 women with HER2 negative breast cancer scheduled to start uh, chemotherapy with doxorubicin. They were randomly divided into two groups, the control group and the Nebivolol treatment group. Nebivolol was administered at a dose of 5 mg once daily, only for the duration of chemotherapy. And cytostatic treatment was performed with doxorubicin in six cycles at intervals of three weeks. The average cumulative dose of doxorubicin was about 500 mg per square meter. Transthoracic echocardiography was performed at baseline and within 24 hours after the sixth cycle of chemotherapy and included conventional, two-dimensional, tissue doppler imaging and speckle tracking imaging. After six cycles of chemotherapy with doxorubicin, the classical echocardiographic parameters of left ventricular systolic function, that means ejection fraction, shortening fraction, and left ventricular diameters did not change significantly. However, tissue Doppler imaging revealed in the control group, that means in the group without cardioprotection of nebivolol, significant alterations of the left ventricular diastolic function, assessed by a decrease in early diastolic myocardial velocities. Speckle tracking imaging also assessed a significantly alteration of systolic left ventricular function, demonstrated by a reduction in the strains and uh, strain rates of the left ventricle, and in this image you can see a significant reduction after four months of chemotherapy of left ventricular longitudinal strain, and the same happened with a radial ventricular strain. In the nebivolol treatment group, although we observed some reductions in these uh, parameters of systolic and diastolic function of the left ventricle, they were not significantly statistic. The third results of this study demonstrated the utility of new echocardiographic methods such as tissue Doppler and speckle tracking imaging in the early detection of ventricular dysfunction induced by cytostatic treatment. Nebivolol treatment prevented the occurrence of anthracycline-induced cardiotoxicity. But this was a small study with a short follow-up period, and it was not uh, double-blinded, it was open-labeled. That's why we need larger studies with longer follow-up period and double-blinded to confirm these promising preliminary results. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, questions or comments? Peter? There are two major drawbacks of your study. First, didn't tell us, you did not tell us, are these people were on some other important cardiovascular no, drugs? No, no. Well, I have another presentation at 2 o'clock, the many slides. Uh, none of this patient was on cardiovascular medication and none had any cardiovascular disease, nor diabetes, nor hypertension. Inclusion, exclusion criteria, they are that, in the long that version. That is important to mention. Thank you very yes. much, because my second question was 
Did they have any previous cardiovascular disorders? Thank you. No cardiovascular disorders, you no cardiovascular so it's treatment. For to yes. Thank you. Do you have a question? Hi, Crystal Fenn with MedPage today. Um, there have been a lot of um, other things attempted in in protecting the heart and in cancer um, that haven't panned out longer term. How long do you think that you'd need to follow patients to see if there's an actual impact on the cardiovascular yes. outcomes? Uh, this um, anthracycline induced cardiomyopathy can have an acute form or a chronic form. The acute form starts during chemotherapy and the chronic form may start a few months or a few years after chemotherapy. So uh, our cardioprotection lasted only for the duration of chemotherapy, but these patients have to be seen by a cardiologist. So I ask the oncologists to send their patients to the cardiologist before chemotherapy, after chemotherapy, and a few years after. Regular controls, I presume at six months, it would be okay. And we used in uh, this uh, study only echocardiography to assess uh, cardiac dysfunction. But uh, there are some other methods, too, that are a little bit more expensive, like cardiac MRI. But okay. I think in, it worked. In the, in the, how long does it usually take for breast cancer patients to develop heart failure after their treatment? Could it be a, a decade, two decades later? Well, uh, I, as I told you, uh, the acute form of cardiomyopathy develops during chemotherapy, so within, within uh, a few weeks. And the other form develops after a few years. And uh, this uh, cardiomyopathy is dose-related. It's dose-related and uh, irreversible. So it is very important to detect it in early stages and to start cardioprotection as early as we can. Anybody else on the panel want to comment on pardon. the findings? I think that, you, I don't know if you were at the guideline session this morning, but there is a position paper from the ESC on cardio-oncology where all the details regarding the different kinds of uh, chemotherapies and the risk, re reversible, non-reversible, the, the timing of this cardiac dysfunction and then over heart failure are details. So I would encourage you to go to the pocket version of this, guy, this position paper, which will uh, help you and it gives a lot of uh, details. One final point, quick response, because we are yes. getting late. Uh, what is the potential mechanism for the benefit of beta blockers and why did you use specifically Nebivolol? I used it because it is a beta-1 selective uh, blocker with antioxidating, vasodilating and anti-apoptotic properties and doxorubicin induces heart failure due to oxidative stress and apoptosis. Okay, thank you very much. I think we have to move on. And I hand over